Okay, let's go through the back page of chapter seven, uh, review worksheet number one. Uh, this is number three. It says, let R and S be the regions in the first quadrant shown in the figure. Um, the region R is bounded by the x-axis and the graph of 2 minus x cubed and y is equal to tangent of x. The region S is bounded by the y-axis and the graph of 2 minus x cubed and y is equal to tangent of x. Find the area of R. So if we look at R, we see that um, we can do top minus bottom, but if we do top minus bottom, we see that uh, depending on where we draw our rectangle, uh, the top curve is going to change. Um, on this side, it'll be the tangent x, but then on this side, the top curve will be 2 minus x cubed. So that means we have to split this up into two uh, different, uh, different uh, integral, uh, integral statements. I'm going to go ahead also to fill in what that ordered pair is because uh, that will come in useful. So to do that, we can uh, simply plug in our calculator, y equals tangent of x, and 2 minus x cubed in our graphing calculator, and uh, look for the intersection. And the intersection is at the ordered pair of x value 0.902 and y value 1.266. So uh, we know that uh, for region R, this first region has the upper bound of y equals tangent of x. So from 0 to 0 0.902, we're going to have tangent of x minus 0, top curve minus uh, bottom curve. So that's represented by this first expression. Okay. Plus, now I'm going to find the area of the second region, which has a different uh, top curve, which is 2 minus x cubed, and the bottom curve is 0. Now the left bound is 0 0.902. The right bound is going to be where this 2 minus x cubed crosses the x-axis. So we can set 2 minus x cubed equal to 0. When we do that, we can solve for x, and we get x equal to cube root of 2. So cube root of 2 will be um, uh, the, right, the, uh, the, uh, the right bound for the second region. So the second region will go from 0 0.902 to cube root of 2. And in this region, we have a top curve of 2 minus x cubed and a bottom cur of curve of 0. So 2 minus x cubed minus 0 is simply 2 minus x cubed. And the rest we can plug in our calculator, um, going through and uh, finding the integral uh, using the, um, uh, uh, the integral feature, uh, fn integral, in our uh, graphing calculator. And this will result in 0 0.478 for the first integral. Second one will produce 0.251. We add those two together. 0.729 square units will be the area for R. Okay, for S, uh, we're also going to try and do top minus bottom because um, if we do right minus left, we're going to have to change the equations to be x equals, and that will be uh, possible, but also a little messier. So let's see what uh, top minus bottom will give us. Now, if we do top minus bottom, we see that um, we're going to get consistently, in region S, consistently the top curve uh, will be the 2 minus x cubed, and then consistently the bottom curve will be the tangent of x. So no matter where you draw your rectangle, you're always going to um, have the top of the rectangle hitting the same curve um, consistently, and then the bottom of the rectangle will consistently hit the bottom of uh, the bottom curve. So there's no need to split this up into two integrals. Uh, we can just write this in one integral. We have consistency uh, with our top curve, unlike region R. So the bounds will go from 0 to, this is the furthest right that the graph goes, and the furthest right here, uh, we're going to again look for x value because uh, well, we're doing top minus bottom everything in terms of x. So we, we're going to actually use the same bound for the first region of R, which is 0 0.902. So from 0 to 2, 0 0.902 are our bounds. Our top curve is 2 minus x cubed. Our bottom curve is tangent of x. So if we want to find the area, we always do top curve minus bottom curve. That's our formula. And we can plug this in our calculator. We'll get 1.161 square units. Okay, finally, part C. Find the volume of the solid generated when S is revolved about the x-axis. So I redrew uh, the figure 
and I just highlighted uh, shaded in region S. Okay. Now to determine whether to, uh, whenever we're revolving around an axis, we're having to decide between two um, methods. Either we have to go through washer method or this method. And the way we tell is we look at the shaded region in relation to the axis of rotation. We, uh, if there's a gap, then we have to go through washer method. We see that there is a noticeable gap between the shaded region and the axis. So we have to go through washer method. And because we're rotating around the horizontal line, we're going to be using vertical um, radius. So big R will extend from the axis to the further curve. And little r will extend from uh, the axis to the inner curve, the curve that's closer. And so if you compare the two lengths, big R is always going to be longer in length than little r. So now we are going to take step by step to plug into our formula for washer method, pi big R squared minus little r squared. Now to find big R and little r, we have to do top minus bottom for both. So top of um, our big of our uh, big radius is two, uh, is on the two minus x cubed. The bottom is at zero, so two minus x cubed minus zero is simply two minus x cubed. The top of the small radius is at tangent x. The bottom is at zero, so tangent of x minus zero is simply tangent of x. So pi big R squared, which is represented by two minus x cubed, and then tangent of x is little r quantity squared. And the bounds are again going to be from 0 to 0 0.902, just like part B, uh, because um, it's the same region. We're just um, rotating. We're just doing something a little bit different with it. We're finding the volume. So plug this in your calculator. You'll get 2.652 pi cubic units. All right, number four. Um, let R be the region bounded by the graph 4x squared minus x cubed. Okay. and the x-axis. Let L be the line tangent to, to, um, uh, to this graph, f of x, at x equals 3. And let S be the region bounded by the graph, uh, by the linear graph, L, and the x-axis shown in the figure um, here. So part A says find the equation of the line L written in slope-intercept form. Okay. So we're going to have to figure out how to write the equation of this line, knowing that uh, the only thing that we know is that the, the, uh, the line is tangent to this curve at x equals 3. So this is a good question to test the knowledge of derivatives in terms of its relationship with um, a curve, a slope, and a line. So. Um, if we, want to find, if, if we want to find the equation of a tangent line, we need two pieces of information. We need the ordered pair, and then we also need the slope of that line. So to find the ordered pair, we know the x value. So if we know the x value, um, we also know that this is the x value that is, uh, this is the ordered pair that is shared between uh, the curve and the uh, line because they're telling us that the line is tangent to the curve. So if I plug 3 into the function, and if I get the y value, then that y value must also be shared by the line because we see that they're tangent. That means they're going to share the same point. So if I plug 3 in for x, I can find um, uh, my ordered pair. So plug 3 in, I'll get 4 times 9, 36 minus 27, uh, which is 9. So our ordered pair is 3, 9. Okay, now how do we find the slope? Well, we know we can find out the slope of this curve because we know uh, what the function is equal to. We know the function is 4x squared minus x cubed. And we also know that we can find the derivative. Okay, if we can find the derivative, we can plug in the order, we can plug in the 3 to find out its exact steepness at this point. And if we can find out the exact steepness of that point on the curve, then we also know. Um, that must also be the steepness that is shared by the line. Okay? And all that is given by this information here, tangent. So if a line is tangent to a curve, they are not only going to share the same order pair, they are going to share the same slope. So if we can find the slope 
of the curve at that point, then we have also arrived at the slope of the, of the line that is tangent to the curve. Okay, so we can find the derivative, f prime, go through power rule, so 4x squared becomes x, 8x, x cubed becomes 3x squared, so once we have our derivative, we can plug in our x value, uh, so we get 24 minus 27, which is negative 3, so our slope is negative 3. So we have our slope, we have our ordered pair, and we have our, um, we can, we have our point slope, um, form here and plug in uh, into our point slope form. However, they are asking for slope intercept form. So we solve for y and we get y is equal to negative 3x plus 18. Part B, find the area of S. So we want to find the area of S. Notice if you look at S, this is similar to region R from uh, number 3 in that uh, depending on where you draw your um, rectangle, your, t your bottom curve is not going to be consistent. So the bottom curve for this region is going to be the r, and it's going to be the function f of x. Um, uh, and region in the second region here, we see that the bottom um, curve or the bottom of the, uh, of the region is going to change to the x-axis. So we have to find um, we have to find two separate integrals, find the area separately here because uh, we don't have consistency in the bottom graph. So we need to figure out where that bound is. We can set uh, f of x equal to 0. And when we do that, we're going to get um, uh, 0 and 4. So when we have 0 and 4, we know that is our uh, bound there. Uh, but for part b, I'm sorry, for part B, we actually find the area of S uh, of R. So if we find the area of R is simply top curve minus bottom curve, it is consistently um, one top function and consistently one bottom function. So we can say top minus bottom, which will give us 4x squared minus x cubed, and between 0 and 4, which we found from the bound above. And when we do that, plug in our calculator, we get 64 over 3 square units. Okay, part C is where uh, we have to find the area of S, which has two separate regions. So the first region is the line, negative 3x plus 18, minus the f of x. So top curve minus bottom, that's for this first region here, between um, 3 and 4. And we say 3 because 3, this is where region S starts. Region S starts at this x value. And then, and then it ends at 4, at least for this first portion. And then the second portion is from 4 to 6. And then in between 4 and 6, we have our top curve being the line and the bottom curve being, or the bottom graph being the 0, being the x-axis. So then we can plug all this in our calculator. We'll get 1.917 for the first area, for the first region. The second region will give us 6. So we add those together, we get 7.917 square units. Part D, find the volume of the solid generated when region R is revolved about the x-axis. So I drew, I redrew the diagram just for region R. So we're revolving about the x-axis. So to determine which method we use, washer or disk, we have to look at the shader region in relation to the axis. We see that there is no gap. We only have to draw one radius. And this is a horizontal line, horizontal axis. So we have to force us to have to draw a vertical uh, radius. So this is this method because there's no gap. And we do top minus bottom because we have a vertical radius. So top minus bottom, top is 4x squared minus x cubed. Bottom is 0, so we get 4x squared minus x cubed. And our formula for this method is pi big R squared between our bounds of 0 and 4, lower and upper, our left and right bound. And then big R is simply 4x squared minus x cubed, quantity squared. So pi big R squared, this is the formula for this method. In our calculator, we plug in, we get 156.038 pi cubic units is our volume.